What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am back from my WWE's Crown Jewel 2018 predictions. Now, Crown Jewel happens this Friday morning live on the WWE Network from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Now, this event has been the most controversial event in 2018 for WWE. This event could uh, may have not even happened. It would have been canceled or moved to another venue, but WWE was so hell-bent on putting this show on for the, the people of Saudi Arabia because they're part of this 10-year partnership with them. Even though I know a lot of people are not happy this, this show is going to happen now. And calling it Crown Jewel. Talk about gimmick infringement to pro wrestling's only and true crown jewel, Chase Owens. Now, this card is small. As of right now, we only have five big matches. And as of right now, we only have three title titles on the line. And one of those title matches may not even happen. So, I'm very interested in doing these crown jewel predictions for you guys. And I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, if you have not checked out my three other videos I put up on the channel today, definitely go check them out. This is the fourth video of the day. So, I hope you guys will be able to watch all these videos. Now, right after this video, I'll have my official week nine NFL predictions. And so remember, five big videos will be up on the channel today. So I hope you guys will be able to watch all of these videos. As always, show your support by watching these videos, super kicking those like buttons, hitting that notification bell, commenting your picks and your opinions in the comments section down below. Now, if this is your first time watching my channel, as a first time viewer, and this is your first video, boy, you pick the good one if you're a huge WWE fan like myself and you're ready for this crown jewel event in Saudi Arabia. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JT Dangerously. Welcome to the club because this club is... Two. Whoop, whoop. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Now, if they do add any other matches to this card, which they probably will, I'll have them in the comment section down below, but I'm going to do the five matches that have already been confirmed. Now, let's start off with the first matchup. It is the first ever WWE World Cup, a eight-man, one-night tournament to determine the self-proclaimed best in the world. Now, when I see a World Cup, usually you see some international stars. But when you look at the field for this thing, there's not one non-American in it. All of these, all of the men from Raw, the four men from Raw and the four men from SmackDown are not even international. It's an all-American cup. And to determine the best in the world, really, WWE, you're going to you're gonna have a tournament to prove who's the best in the world when you know that crowd's going to be chanting CM Punk or Jericho as the best in the world. And you're just doing a tournament to say, oh, this guy, whoever wins, is the best in the world. Self-proclaimed. Right. And now let's start off with the competitors first on Monday Night Raw. Now, he was going to be in this tournament, but he, he's not going to be doing the event. That would have been John Cena. But I, by Monday night, we'll definitely have a re replacement for him. My pick, I'm going to just say right now, is Finn Balor. The second man in this tournament is the former general manager of Monday Night Raw. He is an Olympic gold medalist and a multiple-time world champion, a WWE Hall of Famer. He is Kurt Angle. Next, you have the reigning Intercontinental Champion and the brand new Raw Tag Team Champion as of right now. And every time his music hits, you know it's time to... He is Seth freaking Rollins. And the last man in, on the Raw side of this tournament is the former six-time uh, Intercontinental Champion, a former world champion. He is the show-off Dolph Ziggler. The only other side you have on the SmackDown side, you have the former multiple-time world champion. He is the legend killer. He is the viper. He is Randy Orton. You have the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy. You have the greatest mass wrestler of all time, the biggest little man in the business, Rey Mysterio Jr. And you have the A-lister, The Miz. Now, the tournament's going to go uh, a four, um, two, two men from... Um, on the Raw side, we're definitely going to have Kurt Angle versus somebody. And we're going to have Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler. I'm just going to make a pick here. I'm taking Seth Rollins to beat Dolph Ziggler. And I'm going to take Finn Balor, if he's in it, to beat Kurt Angle. So, on the on the semifinal side, I, on Raw, I have Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Now, on the SmackDown side, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. It's going to be Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. Randy Orton. Miz versus Rey Mysterio. Miz. So now my semifinals, I'm taking Seth Rollins to win on the Raw side to make it to the finals. And I'm taking Randy Orton on the SmackDown side to make it to the finals. So my finals hopefully will be Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton. So coming from me in this first ever All-American tournament to, de to determine the self-proclaimed best in the world, I'm going to take Randy Orton. 
And now the next matchup. It is for the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles. Starting off with the Challengers. They are the former five-time SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and they're looking to regain the gold back. They are Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E. They are the New Day. And the New Day is challenging the reigning and defending and now five-time SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. They are the former four-time Raw Tag Team Champions. And they will be accompanied by the seven-foot-tall Big Show. They are the Swiss Superman Cesaro and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, The Bar. Now, this is a rematch of their meeting on the 1,000th episode of SmackDown Live where The Bar became the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions thanks to the Big Show's help. And this is the Bar's first title defense since winning the belt. And this is the New Day's automatic rematch. Now, starting off with the New Day, I think this is their last chance. Yes, they were fantastic tag team champions, but the gimmick right now with them is just so corny. All oh, the pancakes. Like... And Byron Saxon getting all giddy for the New Day. Oh, yeah, every week, every Tuesday. Shut the fuck up, Saxton. Just shut the fuck up. I'm tired of it. And I'm happy that they lost these tag team titles because if they don't win this matchup, you can move them to the back of the line of the tag team division because you got the Usos who have knocked off AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan not once but twice. They are, for me, the number one contenders for the SmackDown tag team title. So if the New Day don't win this matchup, Back of the line, Pancake Boys. Then on the other side, you have the bar coming off their big win on SmackDown 1000. Finally holding the SmackDown Tag Team titles for the first time. And this is their first time holding the Tag Team titles since WrestleMania. And we all know how that ended for the, the Bar's Raw title reign when they lost to Braun Strowman and Nicholas. So it's been a while. It's been a long while. A hot minute since the Bar has held the SmackDown, uh, the Tag Team titles in the WWE in 2018. It's been since April. And they're not gonna, they're gonna make sure their first title defense is a successful one. So coming from me in this SmackDown Tag Team title match rematch, I think the Big Show is definitely the the uh, the ace in the hole for the bar because ever since the New Day came with three men, they've always had the advantage. But now the bar have the ultimate advantage with the Big Show. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking the bar to retain the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles by any means and defeat the New Day. And now the next matchup. It is a dream tag team matchup that could have that was a dream match about 15 years ago between the Generation X and the Brothers of Destruction. Now, this matchup would have been so amazing if this was like 15, 10, 15, 20 years ago. But now with this matchup, it just seems like a nostalgia act. And for and this is a big matchup because this is Shawn Michaels' first match. Since WrestleMania 26 in 2010, he hasn't wrestled in eight years, and this is his first time. This is his first match. We are getting this match instead of the match that I was hoping for in 2017 with Shawn Michaels challenging AJ Styles for the WWE title at the Royal Rumble. So he denied that match for this match. Like, really? But the thing is, when it, Shawn Michaels retired in 2010, I was, I was content that he was going to stay retired. Just like some of the Hall of Famers that have done it, but uh, so, like Ric Flair or Mick Foley. But some of those wrestlers like Foley and Ric Flair came out of retirement when they went to TNA. But the only person that stayed retired was Shawn Michaels. And that's what made him a, a, a man's man by keeping his word. But the fact that they're bringing Shawn Michaels back for a meaningless tag team match with nothing at stake just feels like that match at 26 meant nothing. Because he was going to come back eight years later with no hair and and we don't even know what kind of we don't even know what kind of condition he's going to be in and i just feel so bad that he took he he thought money the money was more important than his pride because his pride was staying retired you hear that chant of one more match and he kept his word and not come out of retirement but to come out of retirement for a bunch load of money is pretty sad to say the least and i've been a dx fan for a while i've been a dx fan since 2006 and i've watched some of their great moments in 97 and 98 but this DX is just not the same DX I watched in 06 and 09. It's just not the same. Then you have the Brothers of the Shrucking, Kane and the Undertaker. Kane, the mayor of Knox County. I don't get why he's still there. Undertaker's a couple matches away from retirement. And 
it just it's just a mess this tag team matchup is nothing but a nostalgia act and it just shows that wwe only cares about the old talent that that made money in the past instead of the guys that are making money right now in the future so coming from me in this dream tag team matchup in some people's eyes I'm going to go with DX, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H to defeat the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and The Undertaker. And now the next matchup. It is for the WWE Championship. And this is the matchup that may not happen. Starting off with the challenger. Now, the challenger is a former WWE Champion. His last title run was over four years ago. And right now, he is a big question mark because he is the former general manager of SmackDown Live. He is Daniel Bryan. Now, the biggest question is, Daniel Bryan has said that he may not, he may not do this show. So, we don't know if he's going to be the challenger here or they're going to replace him with maybe, I don't know, The Miz. So, as of right now, Daniel Bryan is challenging the reigning and defending and undisputed WWE Champion, the greatest WWE Champion since CM Punk. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about, his old one. Get ready to fly! He is Now, what a mess this match is. I mean, we saw it at the Super Showdown. Daniel Bryan defeating The Miz to become the number one contender with a roll-up. The Daniel Bryan special, a, a small package into a pin and defeated The Miz in less than two minutes. And Daniel Bryan has earned this opportunity. But like I said, Daniel Bryan has said he is not going to be doing this event. So... Could Daniel Bryan just be wasting an opportunity for his morals, or does he want to be the WWE champion again? Because if they can, if he's out, they can put anybody in that position to be the next WWE champion, like The Miz, or like ooh, I don't know, um, Randy Orton or Jeff Hardy or The Miz or Rey Mysterio. But this is a big opportunity for Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan hasn't beaten AJ Styles since 2006 when he was in Ring of Honor. Their last meeting was on the night after WrestleMania, but it was an, into a no contest. So, again, Daniel Bryan, do you want to be the WWE Champion? you got to be at this event because if you're not, if, if he says no, he's not going to do it, then I'm sorry, he's not the number one contender. His morals, his, he chose to not do the event, not go after the WWE title, then he should not be the number one contender. That's just my opinion. Then on the other side, you have AJ Styles coming in as the reigning WWE champion. He's been a champ for nearly a year. He's a couple days away from being the, the champion for one solid year. And AJ Styles' last win against Daniel Bryan, you got to go all the way back to 2003 in Ring of Honor. So it's been a while for both men to have beaten... Um, each other. Daniel Bryan hasn't beaten AJ since 2006, and AJ hasn't beaten Bryan since 2003. So it's a long time since they have met one on one, ever since April 10th. So coming from me in this matchup for the WWE title that may or may not happen, whoever they put up, if it's Daniel Bryan or if it's anybody else, I'm going to stick with the phenomenal AJ Styles to retain. The WWE title by any means and defeat either Daniel Bryan or his replacement. And now the main event. It is for the vacant. That's right. The vacant Universal Championship. On one side. He is for me the uncrowned Universal Champion. And he has a chance to become the next Universal Champion. He is the monster among men. And if you know who it is, it's... Strowman! And Strowman's opponent is the former and longest reigning Universal Champion in WWE history. He'll be accompanied by his advocate, Paul Heyman. He is the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Now, this is the second one-on-one -on -one meeting between Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar, their last meeting. You gotta go all the way back to September of last year at No Mercy, where Brock Lesnar defeated Braun Strowman to retain the Universal title with one F5. So this is the much-anticipated rematch. Now, this matchup was supposed to be a triple threat match between Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, and then WWE Champion Roman Reigns, but with the monumental announcement last week on Monday Night Raw by Roman Reigns that 
he had Luke he has leukemia and he had to forfeit the universal title that floored me I did not expect to have that happen and again I'm not a big Roman Reigns fan you know how much I I say he's Vince McMahon's number one dick sucker but to been fighting cancer for 11 years and it just comes back at the worst possible time and he has to forfeit the universal title it was just it was just shocking I was floored I was like I was like looking at the screen I was saying what is he really forfeiting the title and he actually forfeited the title and again best wishes to Roman Reigns he will fight this and he will conquer it like he has done all the time believe that so WWE really didn't have any other choice but to make this a one-on-one -on -one match for the vacant Universal Championship now starting off with Braun Strowman I kind of think WWE dropped the ball with him they turned him heel just to make Roman look good, but now he's back to being a babyface, and he's not even getting the same reactions that he used to get when he was a babyface. Now that's kind of that's that's kind of on the that's kind of on the head of McMahon for doing that. He made a calculated error, and WWE and Strowman is definitely paying for it because he's not getting the same reactions I remember him getting before they turned him heel. Now he's just getting somewhat some like kind of like he was getting top. Cheers, now he's getting like this kind of cheers. And it's pretty sad that it took one injury to take uh, take Braun Strowman, uh, one decision to completely destroy Braun Strowman's momentum as a babyface because just because Roman Reigns was the universal champion. The only other side, you have Brock Lesnar coming in. He's getting his his rightful one-on-one -on -one rematch for the Universal title. By uh, by all means, he'll take it whatever he can, but I know a lot of people, including myself, are hoping he does not hold this belt because if Brock Lesnar wins this belt, we will not see him for another year. He won't defend it most of the, he won't defend it on every pay-per-view. He'll just hold it and just hold the WWE by the balls like he has done for years and years since he has come back to the WWE. So coming from me in this matchup for the vacant Universal Championship, oh man, I swear to God, they give it back to Brock. WWE Network is going to get canceled everywhere around the world. So coming from me in this matchup, it was his time at Hell in a Cell. It did not happen, but now is the time to pull the trigger. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking Braun Strowman to become the new Universal Champion and defeat Brock Lesnar. And those are my Crown Jewel 2018 predictions. Now I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below, who do you have winning the vacant Universal title between Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar? Who do you have winning the WWE title if it happens between Daniel Bryan if he showed, if he wanted to, if he wants the belt against AJ Styles? And who do you have winning that one night tournament to determine the self-proclaimed best in the world let me know your comment section below your picks and your opinions let's have a conversation about it. of course i'm always on to see your comment like it and of course reply right back to me because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel and i do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today now before you guys go you guys can never forget to do this that like button comment share with friends of course super kick that like button like only you guys can of course you can never forget to do this as well that subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous dangerous alliance and i will see you guys later tonight for my week nine nfl predictions later days guys and peace